If you are a new scuba diver and you're in class with your instructor and your instructor shows you one of these two hand signals, would you know how to answer it? Well, if not, follow along in this video because we are going to level up your understanding of hand signals as it relates to air and gas management while scuba diving. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. This is a continuation of the series we're putting on all about hand signals underwater, how to understand them and how to perform them. So we are talking today specifically about hand signals related to air and gas management. As we've stated previously, we want to put hand signals into context. There's been some great videos out there on YouTube, but trying to put them into context on when and how you're going to use those hand signals. In our previous episode, to put things into context, we talked about how do we manage our gas and how do we plan our gas as part of our dive plan. That way it may make more sense to you as to why we're going to use the particular hand signals that we're going to teach you in this episode. But before we go any further, uh, on our previous video we had some great comments from our viewers and we really appreciate you guys uh, adding to this conversation that we like to have with uh, our viewers. Two things that were pointed out to us in different parts of the world, there can be uh, local traditions for certain hand signals and also for different training agencies, they may also use different hand signals. Here's what we would absolutely recommend. Anytime you're diving with potentially a new group of divers or a new training institution, discuss hand signals as part of your pre-dive planning. Make sure everybody's going to use the same signal so there's no confusion underwater. So in this episode, we are going to teach you a variety of different ways to communicate your gas levels and also additional hand signals that relate to air and gas levels. So first, we're going to talk about two-handed hand signals. Then we're going to talk about one-handed hand signals. And why would we use one hand versus two? If you're like me, I like to carry a big old camera rig with me. And sometimes my, my left or right hand might be occupied when my buddy asks me, hey, how much gas do you have? And so I can communicate using two hands or one hand the same information. So that's really nice for divers to know. I train here in the United States. I do a lot of my diving in the Caribbean. And we're very much used to discussing our pressure levels using PSI, pounds per square inch. If you dive elsewhere in the world, you are probably using the metric system, bar. And so we're going to discuss PSI and bar and how do we communicate both of those in hand signals also. Let's dive in. Up first, one of the most common questions that you are going to get from your instructor during your training is how much gas do you have? And so uh, we really instill upon students that you need to be monitoring your gas every minute or two. We always want to keep track of that gas. So here's the two-handed variety. How much gas do you have? Left hand is flat, right hand, one or two fingers pointing to it, basically asking how much gas do you have? The left hand simulates your pressure gauge or your console. Some instructors may actually lift their pressure gauge and put their two or three fingers on the gauge, asking you how much gas you have. The one-handed variety asking how much gas you have is basically a hand extended with the palm upwards, thumb is flat, and basically curling the fingers back. We're just asking you how much gas do you have? So to answer that question, we need to know how to read our gauges properly. And so we have analog SPGs, submersible pressure gauges, and we have digital SPGs. So for my students who are training using PSI, I'm going to ask them to round down to the nearest 100. So for example, if you look at your gauge and your gauge says, I have 1750 PSI, then you're going to communicate to your instructor or your buddies, I have 1700 PSI. We always want to underestimate or go below the number for conservative measures. And for our metric friends who are using bar, we would have you round down to the nearest 10 bar. So for example, if you have a digital pressure gauge and you looked at your pressure gauge and it said, I have 187 bar, you would then round that down to 180 bar and you would communicate that to your buddies or instructor. Again, because one of our philosophies here on Everything Scuba is fortune tends to favor the conservative. So always estimate downwards. For recreational purposes and recreational training, I don't need to know about all the other numbers on your gauges. For PSI, you're going to communicate to me 
thousands and hundreds, and for bar, you're gonna to communicate to me hundreds and tens. Let me demonstrate to you how I would have you communicate to me using two hands with PSI. So for PSI, we're gonna use our left arm extended out, and we're going to use our right hand to communicate on here how many thousands of PSI I have. We're then going to use our hands to communicate the hundreds to my instructor or my buddies. So for example, if I have 2,600 PSI in my tank, I'm going to put two fingers on my forearm and I'm going to show you six fingers on my hands. So thousands and hundreds. And for those students who are going to use BAR for the metric system, two-handed methods, a T hand signal represents half a tank, which is 100 bar, or very close to that. And we're going to add to that 100 the additional amount of gas I have above 100. So for example, if I have 160 bar pressure in my tank, I'm going to communicate 160. If I have less than 100, I'm not going to use the T anymore. I'm simply going to represent the rest of the numbers using my two hands. 1500 PSI would also represent half a tank. You can utilize this same hand signal to let us know you're down to your half tank. So for one-handed communication using numbers, let me give you a demonstration counting from zero to 10 using one hand. We'll start with zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six is a little different. Six is on its side, you're extending your finger towards your midline with your thumb still down. We don't want the thumb up so we don't have any miscommunication that we want to go up. So six, seven is your second finger, eight is your third, nine is your fourth, and ten is a fist. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can communicate all of those numbers using just one hand. And so what that means is to communicate two numbers, you may have to give a hand signal in two different positions using one hand. So for example, let's go back. If I had 2600 PSI in Imperial, I would have two, six, 2600. If in bar I had 170 bar, I would have one, seven, one, seven. Let's talk a little bit more about some additional hand signs that we can use to communicate pressure or gas levels. First up would be, I am low on gas. How would I communicate without using hand signals to actually indicate my actual pressure how can I tell my buddy or my instructor I am low on gas? Here is the hand signal you would give for I am low on gas. So I gave you that low on air hand signal so you're just going to take your fist, put it across your chest, that indicates to your buddy, hey, I am low on air. Number one, what that tells me if I'm your buddy and you come up to me and you say, hey, I'm low on air, I'm sticking by your side. We're going to send together, I'm going to stick with you because I want to make sure I've got my reserve pressure on hand if you need it when you're suddenly out of air. But let's ask a bigger question. I've asked lots of divers, when do you use this hand signal? Um, at what pressure would you consider that you're low on air? And I've heard a variety of things. Obviously, a lot of divers out there will realize that, yes, I should have a reserve pressure. Uh, but I've heard divers tell me that, well, I'm going to wait until I'm down to 200, 300 PSI. That, that's going to get me to the surface. I've heard some divers tell me, well, once I reach my ascent pressure, of 800 PSI or 55, 50 bar, then I'm gonna give you that, I'm low on air, we need to go up. Me personally, my personal preference and what I teach students and what I would use is if I'm on a dive and I reach my ascent pressure plus reserve pressure, which is a total of these two numbers, which makes 800 PSI or around 50 to 55 bar, then I would consider myself low on air because I still have enough air to get my ascent completed and get myself back to the surface and hopefully then have my reserve in place. That may seem very conservative. 
Some divers may feel like, well, I'm not going to give you that low on air hand signal till I reach my reserve pressure. So I'm curious, uh, what are other divers doing out there? When would you use this hand signal and at what pressure? The next hand signal we hope you will never use in your diving career because you should be monitoring your gas every few minutes to make sure you have enough air to get yourself back to the surface. But in the unlikely event that this did occur, we would want you to know this hand signal. This is, I am out of air, and you're going to share air with me. I always joke with my students that this needs to be a very emphatic and there's no misunderstanding, I am out of air. We're not out of air, we are out of air. And we do have one last method to communicate to your instructor or your buddies what your gas levels is. If you can remember nothing about this episode, can't figure out how to give one or two handed hand signals, you could always show them your gauge. There is always that option. This is how much gas I have remaining. We hope though, as a diver with a good instructor, that you would have taken the time to learn how to communicate those hand signals and not just have to show us your gauge. But if all else fails, this is an option. So now let's take a look at some other signals that are gonna come in very handy for you, sorry about the pun, both during your training and while scuba diving with your buddies. Click the link right here. Thanks for watching today and dive safely, friends.